what do you say to people who diminish the idea of like Instagram models and say it's like not a real job? I would say they're that they're just hating. Um, I don't even know. I'm like, you guys are haters. Sorry, but it is it is a career. It is a full time job. I mean, um, you know, I I think a lot of people just see the beauty of what's put into Instagram. Like all like everything that's put onto Instagram is not like the reality stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's produced. It's like the best image, the most perfect image you can possibly get out of a set. And so they don't see like what it takes to get these photos, um, all of the hard work and everything put into it. And it's not and it's something that, you know, you're constantly doing. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like something you do almost every single day. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like for them, to, for people to be like, oh, Instagram model is not a real job. No, it really is, um, you know, because there's a lot of hard work put into it. Um, you know, I didn't become Instagram famous overnight. It's something that I had to work towards uh, mm-hmm. for years to get to where I'm at. And, I, and I'm still always working towards, you know, higher following, reaching a new audience, collaborating with new people, uh, working with different brand deals. Like there's just so much that goes into it. So, yeah. What would you say to someone who was maybe trying to level up their Instagram game? Do you have any like tips or tricks for people? Um, well, if you're trying to level up your Instagram game, I would just say um, find your niche like uh, whatever brand you want to do, like if it's lifestyle or something sexy, just find your niche and then constantly collaborate your ass off. Mm. (laughs) Um, You know, you might have to pay for a few photo shoots in the beginning, but I would say just being consistent um, and again, collaborating, working your ass off. Yeah. uh, Hard work will always pay off in the end. Yeah. I will say like collaborations are a big thing. We do a lot of like, collaborations on our reels for the podcast it was once i started the podcast and started using the instagram reels function is that when it grew and doing collabs it that's when it shot up yeah like it's crazy right it's It's, it's crazy and and masha runs my instagram account and she's very like in the numbers and she's like okay this does well and then instagram flags this and then you gotta like delete this picture or only use this picture Mm -hmm. like because there's and there's this whole section that um a lot of people don't know about that they Instagram won't recommend your profile to other people if mm-hmm. you have pictures that are flagged. And that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that they're going to take them down. They just like flag they it. They won't monetize. Yeah. And, and they won't oh, recommend God. it to other people. So I got a, I actually have a really terrible but funny story. I can kind of laugh about it now. This happened to me two days ago. Um, so I'm in the sauna at the spa, right? And I like to send my fans little hello videos all the time when I'm mm-hmm. naked. But Instagram has like the best filters on. It does. And so it does. So I'm I'm doing. Like but they a, only let you do ninety seconds. Exactly. I but, know. So so what I was doing is I had no makeup and I'm in the sauna and I'm doing like a little naked hello video for one of my fans on Instagram, just to use the filter. <sighs> well, the I I, I accidentally you. posted a naked story on my Instagram and I have no idea how long it was up for, but it got taken down. And then I got this scare message from Instagram yeah. saying, like, you know, we, we removed your story for sexual content, yeah. nudity. Your account could get taken down. You're unable to monetize. And I was like, fuck, my page was doing so well. Yeah. So, yeah, I posted a nude on accident. Whoops. I mean, there were a <laughs> lot of people that weren't sad about that. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully too many, hopefully not too many people saw it. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> God, I... I, you know, that's like my greatest fear because I've totally done the exact same yeah. thing. Start using Snapchat, if anything, for the good filters. Like, yeah, but Instagram has, they have one that's really Snapchat's good. a little much. It's aggressive, Like right? a lot of their filters are too much. And Instagram has this one, it's like one of the first ones. It's just like, it's just enough. It's just you soft, I mean? It's you just know? soft, but yeah. it's not too much. It doesn't make you look like a heart. It doesn't make, I hate the ones on Snapchat that make your nose look smaller. Oh, God. Like, Those are the ones that make people get plastic surgery. Yeah, like, you know? I, I don't want And the wanna, lips bigger and everything. I don't want to change how my face looks. I yeah, just, just want to, like, like, smooth it out I just don't want to put makeup on. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, very, yeah. very annoying. Um, so, I've actually, so I, you know, follow you on Instagram, and I noticed that you do these interesting little videos that I don't, I haven't really seen on other people's <laughs> profiles. It's just like you in a sexy outfit, just like going about your day-to-day thing, like grocery doing shopping, grocery shopping. Going to Target. So yeah. I feel like <laughs> you're definitely harnessing, the, harnessing this kind of reality, you know, yeah. um, genre. When did, how did you come up with that? So I actually, I think I started doing that maybe two months ago. Um, and it kind of happened on accident. So 
So my photographer and I, we're just, we've been shooting just more lifestyle stuff and, you know, just day-to-day stuff. But we just so happened to capture this guy gawking at me in the background. And when I posted it, um, I think we got like 43 million views. Wow. It went super viral. Um, so I was like, I was like, wait a minute, I think we might be onto something. So we just kept doing it over and over again. And every time I do one of those videos, it's getting like millions of views. Yeah. Um, and I think it's for, you know, multiple reasons because it's like, okay, you know, everybody's used to seeing an Instagram model, mm-hmm. but like, you know, it, it's nice to see like, okay, this is how they are in real life. Like, do they actually look like this in real life? Uh, you know, how would you approach someone if you met like a model? So I feel like it raises all these questions in like the fans' brains, like, uh, you know, how you are in reality. So yeah. it's more relatable too. Totally. And it makes you feel accessible. You're yeah, like, oh, accessible. Yeah. I could see that girl You're at like, the grocery store. I could store. ask her for her number. <laughs> I could, yeah, I could see that girl at the grocery store. I could ask her for her number, and she could turn around and tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure yeah. you would do that. Or be really I nice. would. Yeah. <laughs> Holly. <Ma. laughs> Actually, today yeah. I was laughing. I was crossing the street today, and some guy like pulled over in his car and like asked me for my number. Oh, and part did of you me say, did you say fuck off? Yes, <laughs> but I was also like, oh, okay, like I I haven't had that happen to me like in years. It's that booty, you like, know? I know. I know. Holly right? Randall's got a booty. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> paying off thank you doctor thank you dr cohen <laughs> but yeah it was funny because I, I like part of me was like ah oh, and part of me was like i still got it but still fuck off i love it you're just like fuck off if that was me i would have been like thank you bye like, i'm all nice fuck well, you once he, like once he like asked me for like it's one thing to be like oh you're so beautiful i would have been like thank you but then uh-huh. when he was like let me get your number get like your come number. on come over here then i was like no don't yeah don't. Come on, get out of here. Like, <laughs> right. has that ever worked for you? You know what I mean? They're like, too thirsty. Like, I just want to go up to him and be like, has that ever worked for you? Like, have you ever cat, cat called a girl yeah. and said, hey, baby, give me your number? And she's walked up to your car and like giving you her number. Yeah. How's that, like, how's that working for you? You know what amazes me is how many guys do that because they obviously think it works. And I wonder how many women do you harass on a day to day basis and how many women actually respond? <laughs> I know. Because they do it. You know? I, you know, I think it's I think it's less about them wanting, like, thinking that they're going to get a response. And I think it's more about getting a reaction. And Maybe. I think, and yeah, I think I it has know. to do more with, like, power and, like, trying to make you feel, like, uncomfortable. Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. That's pretty sick to think of it like that. I know. But I, I, but I, I, I think of it I in, like, it a more sense. sinister yeah. way because it's, like, yeah, it's a very aggressive. I don't know. It is though. It makes sense. Yeah, because they know they know they're making you feel uncomfortable. You totally. know, totally. Yeah, because like, there there's literally like no woman who's like, oh yeah, like <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, let me give you my or number. It's like okay, you know when a guy sends a dick pic, like yes. like just randomly on Facebook or Instagram mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm like, how like how many women actually respond to those? Mm-hmm. Like, I know. I feel like it's like the same type of scenario, yeah. like catcalling and dick pics. I'm like, what what is going on in your head here? Do you know, I forget what it's called, there's a name for it, but it's when guys um, take photos of themselves like naked, but you can't tell at first glance. Like they're naked in the reflection of like a tea kettle or something like that. So you get this picture and you think it's like just a tea kettle, I have but he's like nude this. in, the, there's, a, there's a name for it. Hmm. And it's like a whole, and I think also people will like upload these photos to, I don't know, like eBay or something like, tea kettle for sale but and like a there's nude? a reflection of it but yeah and it's like That's but you don't see it really unless you look there, there's actually a name for it i can't remember what it's called it's but it's like a of, whole it's thing actually a clever thing I might, I might start selling some tea kettles <laughs> <laughs> gonna be very shiny highly polished yep hello my amazing listeners you know how much i love bringing this podcast to your ears every week So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. 
Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.